Hello and welcome back, my digital mutants. It is I, Delmico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media. So, in this week's episode, I wanted to take a look at one of my favorite sculpting packages. It's near and dear to my heart. It is 3D Coat. So we can see right now I have my scar. Now this scar was not actually modeled in coat. This scar was actually modeled <clears throat> in a great little program called Silo. So I did all of the polygonal modeling in Silo and then imported this into coat. Now I did not, normally I will say I would not bring in hard surface models to um, put detail on them as a as a kind of clay surface but I had a particular question that was asked and it was using the pose tool here inside of coat so to answer that question I wanted to bring in something to do this with so normally yes I'll agree I would not do hard surface sculpting inside of coat I would probably just model the object and then bring it into coat for painting and unwrapping um, purposes but not really working with it in here so anyway inside of coat underneath my adjust tab so I'm in sculpting mode and you'll notice that I'm in surface mode not in voxel mode it doesn't matter these adjust tools are there no matter which mode you're using so here in my adjust tools I'm gonna go down to get my pose tool <clears throat> and my pose tool works a couple different ways I'm gonna turn on symmetry at the same time so you'll see there's my symmetry plane going down the middle of my model. So the, the uh, pose tool works in a couple of different ways. The first way by default is usually in line mode. And in line mode, you'll click and drag out a line. And from where you start to where you go forward is what will be selected. So if I went this way, everything on the other side of my selection will be what I selected. Right? So if you think about it, so if I go like this, it'll get everything going down. If I go like this, it gets everything going back. So it's where you start and where you move towards is what is how the selection works inside of a 3D coat. So you'll see I'm able to select pretty easily with the line tool. Now if you drag your line out, if you have a really tight line like this, you'll get this really sharp kind of fall off right here, which can work. I'm gonna turn. I'm actually gonna turn off the uh, symmetry plane just so it doesn't confuse it with the red from this. So you can see with with this selection like this, though, I'm actually able to do really tight selections. If I click and drag out really far, it'll smooth that band right there, so that transition zone will be banded. Now I could I could say that I wanted to actually smooth my selection out so I could come in here and say smooth selection and smooth that out even more you also can hold down the shift as you make your selection and it will try to smooth out your selection as you make it now you can clear this you can save this selection for later you can edit the pose fall off so by going here to the pose fall off, you can see I can actually edit how this falls off. I can say OK. So now when I drag this, you'll see my fall off zone is, is a lot different. All right. So I can use my line tool. I can use ring. Now ring does what it sounds like. It just makes a ring around the model. So if I were just to select like right here, it'll only select the band or a ring right there. It won't select the whole model. So I could do things like, you know, be able to change kind of this. So it has uses. So you can you can select a ring around your model. Now you can also come in here and say sphere. And it will select a spherical place. So you'll see it starts from the center and then moves out. Alright, so now all of this has been selected. Now you'll see it's a very soft selection and that's why it's letting me kind of goo this around a little bit because it's a soft selection that I have on this. 
on this piece. See that? So I can now it's some kind of weird misshapen type of gun. I don't know what's going on with that. Now the thing to note is that your center right here is where everything comes from. This has the hardest amount, so this has the most selection or the the most uh, pull to your selection is going to be right there in the center of your sphere. And then I also have paint selection. Paint selection does what it sounds like. It lets me actually come in here and paint a selection. I can use the control key to take away a selection. And I can smooth with my shift. So I can hold down shift and paint paint this smooth. So I can come in here and kind of paint this what I want to select. So you'll see I'm painting this pretty simple, pretty easy. So I want to select this and I want to smooth it. I hold down shift and kind of smooth that transition zone on the edge of that out a little bit more. And yeah, so I've got that selected. And I can come in here, if I go to my side view, go flat. So I can see now I could grab this and just kind of move this back, as it were. So you'll see you can do a lot of selection, much like you would inside of something like ZBrush or other programs. So you can select your meshes and move things around just because you're not using something like ZBrush doesn't mean you don't have access to those features so I can move those around now something that kind of happens from time to time is you will I'm not going to save the selection I'm just going to clear it so clear my selection so you will try to select and it won't go all the way through your model what I end up doing is using either the paint and usually what has happened is the tool just can't get through the whole mesh so sometimes I will clear it right and with clearing this out you know you can even select an object so if you go ahead if you see that right there this is one whole object so by hitting select object it actually just selected the whole object but like I say one thing that happens and it's only this only more so happens when you have a selection you're trying to make and you have symmetry turned on so uh, sometimes you just have to come in here and clear the selection out and then go in here and either use your line tool or your paint select tool to get it to go where the way you want I, I, I rarely have very many problems I try to make sure that my selections are made from an orthographic view so like the side I make sure this is made from a complete side view when I make it and so it goes all the way through right so make sure this is made from a side and then now if I come in here and do things like scale all of this I don't have really any issues with it and I can come in here and you know come right here and scale this back so let's say I scale that out but I want to scale this back a little bit flatter like right there so you can see those movements are making pretty good um, moves with this now what I will say also is make sure if you're using if you are actually using um, 3d coat that you stay up to date on your on your versions of coat um, right now I'm currently and I think I might be a version behind I'm not really sure but you want to stay up as, as much as possible on the newer versions of coat because there's they usually have a lot of hot fixes and a lot of patches that come out with their uh, releases which is something that I'm, I'm not I see it as well from uh, ZBrush but ZBrush is already kind of it's a bigger company it's a bigger system I believe that 3d coat maybe has like two people working on this uh, program at any given time which is still freaking amazing that they're doing such high quality work and in my opinion they have actually beat out 
um, ZBrush in many ways and a lot of the tools that are available here inside of Coat to the point to the point that I rarely open up ZBrush anymore. Uh, I, I was a ZBrush user for many for for many years. I was around when it first started. Um, I actually remember ZBrush, and it was still just a <clears throat> painting program. Right before it kind of took off as a 3D uh, sculpting program, because it really originally was to, meant to be a 2.5D painting program. And you still can see that when you open up the canvas and you kind of draw on the canvas inside of uh, ZBrush. But anyway, if you're having issues with doing selections or moving things around like that, just make sure you clear your selection. Make sure you have a newer version. I'm, I'm running version 4.7, uh, 4.712 of 3D Coat. So, you know, make sure you have up to date version. Make sure that you clear a selection. And then also remember you can go in there and paint selections by hand if you need to. And all of those things seem to make it work better. So until next time, my digital mutants, it is I, Domico L. Cunningham, better known as Dr. Media.